Good morning. Well, if you are visiting again, what a, a, a great privilege it is for us to be able to worship with you and, and to worship our God together. Next week, if you're coming back with us, we're starting a new series next week that's going to be called Wade in the Water. And we're going to be looking at how the stories of faith develop in God's word throughout as it relates to water. So can you think of any stories in God's word that intersect with water? We think of the Jordan River, which is listed some 129 times in God's word, and we think of God's people crossing the Jordan River. We think of Jesus being baptized in the Jordan River. We think of God's people, um, especially Jesus, as he is in the Sea of Galilee, and he walks out on the water. We think of Peter, who steps out in faith on the water. And so can you think of any stories uh, that come up as it relates to water? We thought that might be fitting as we are in Coast Guard season, and we're in a town that has a lot of water around it. And so we're going to be focusing on um, God's story and how it uses water, which is instrumental in God's land. But for today, we're uh, wrapping up a series that is called Our Favorite Playlist, and we're taking a look at how different verses are favorite verses that help us through the difficulties of life. As I think of favorite verses, I wonder if you have a new one. From this series, is there a new series that you've kind of held on to, that you've hung on to, that you've clung to, that has helped you with the difficulties that you face, maybe? You know, there's a particular mountain that's in Israel that looks like this. It's called Mount Arbel, and we know that Jesus most likely climbed this mountain to pray for his disciples. But if you climb up it or climb down the backside of it, here's what it looks like. And as we finish this climb, the one question we often ask is, what did you notice? What did you notice on the cliffside? And that is, of course, the handles. What would it be like if those handles weren't there? How difficult would it be? And what would it be like if you and I didn't have the handle of Scripture to hold on to when difficulties come? And that's what this service has been about, is what are the handles from God's Word that now you can cling to because of this particular series that we've been walking through uh, together? So our last one for today is going to be Joshua 1, verse 9. I'll just give that to you right away. But before we look at that verse, remember we've been saying that context is so important. What comes before and what comes after verse is critical. And what comes before Joshua? Deuteronomy. So we're going to take a little bit of time and look at Deuteronomy and see how Joshua 1.9 is so important as it comes out of the book of Deuteronomy together. So look at Deuteronomy with me if you have your Bibles before you or there are extra Bibles by the doors or if you have a device that you can turn on. Uh, Take a look at Deuteronomy with me at this time. And in chapter 30, notice with me in Deuteronomy, it says that there's going to be in chapter 30 a change of land. There's going to be a change in leadership. And so look at Deuteronomy 30 now as we're thinking about Joshua 1.9. At Deuteronomy 30, look at verse 19. All of God's people are gathered together Moses has been an amazing leader, but he's going to step down soon. And so what does this leader who is going to step down say to the people in Deuteronomy 30 at verse 19? Here are the words that Moses shares. He says, now to you people, choose life. Choose it so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice. Hold fast to him for the Lord is indeed your life. Now, the Hebrew word that comes up where it says listen is that word maybe you've heard before, shema or shema. It's the word that comes up all the way through Deuteronomy where God tells his people, you need to listen and you need to pay attention and you need to hear. In case you know Hebrew at all, there it is on the left. We read it from the right to the left, shema Yisrael. And it comes up over and over again in Deuteronomy, especially verses four through nine of chapter six. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord indeed is one. It's even a word that I have on my ring because I'm not a good listener. And I want to be reminded daily that I need to listen first before I indeed speak. I need to be one who listens what God says. Bless you. So often my prayer is, God, help me to listen. As I wake up in the morning, the first thing I want to do is ask God, you know I'm prone not to listen. You know I'm prone to talk. Help me to listen to what you have for me, Father. I don't know about you, but listening is a process. It's been a process in my life that I've had to learn, and some may say I'm not doing very well at it. But I'm still learning to listen to him. I'm still learning to pay attention to what 
he has for me. I remember like it was yesterday. It was one of the first fall group, small group experiences I've ever been in. Do you remember the first time you were in a small group? How nervous you were and maybe anxious? And if you're not in a small group and never have been, this is your challenge to be part of a small community. I remember being in a small group in Evanston, Illinois, and this small group met in different um, people's homes. So it was in an apartment living room, and they always sang music, which is a little weird, isn't it? When you're with 12 or 13 people and you're all singing together in a small room, you can't really hide your voice. I remember singing, and it was an intimate song, and I remember looking over on my right-hand side, and there was a young guy by the name of Nate who was a leader, and Nate was just sobbing with tears. And I thought, well, that's kind of corny. That's kind of awkward. Why would you be crying in the middle of our small group? And after the small group, I may have told you this story. Nate walked over to me and he said, you know why I was tearing up over there? And I said, I have no idea. I can guess in my mind. He says, I was tearing up because when I looked at you, I recognized that you didn't have a relationship with Jesus in the way that I do. And he was right. My tendency wanted to be to judge him. But Nate was right. And that was the year that I said to Nate Bobbitt, will you teach me to listen? Have you ever asked somebody to help you listen? How are you at listening to him and what God has for you? Are you a good listener when it comes to God's voice? Is he indeed your life? It's so loud out there today, isn't it? How will you slow things down and just listen? Listen, it's all the way through the Old Testament. Listen, listen. And we're building the case for Joshua 1.9 in case you're wondering why we haven't read scripture yet. Listening to him, hearing what he has to say, allowing him to teach us. Yeah, but some people today will say, do you know how much you give up when you become a Christian? When you listen to him first, do you know how much you give up, how much freedom you give up? But to that I would say, do you know how much you gain when you listen to him? Uh, There's an apologist by the name of Blaise Pascal. I think his first name is really cool, by the way. Imagine if your first name was Blaise. Hey, Blaise, come here. You'd be like, yeah, I'll blaze the way. But Blaise says this, belief is a wager, a wise wager. Granted that faith cannot be proved, what harm will come to you if you gamble on its truth and it proves false? If you gain, you gain it all. If you lose, you lose nothing. Wager then without hesitation that he indeed exists, Blaze would say. I remember one of my professors at Calvin Seminary summarized it this way. He called it uh, Pascal's wager, but he says it this way on the screen. He says, I would rather bet on the Lord now and lose nothing, if you're wrong, than bet on nothing on him now and lose everything for eternity. I'd rather wager on him now and lose nothing if it's not true than wager on him and lose everything if it is true. I'd rather bet on him now, Blaise Pascal would say. Well, let's continue moving. Let's look at Deuteronomy 31. So we were in chapter 30, now we're in verse 31. A leadership change takes place, but look at what Moses says to everyone in his midst. Deuteronomy 31, verse three. It says, the Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. Joshua will also cross over ahead of you. It's as if Moses is saying, God will be in front of you. And wherever you go as a shepherd, he's already there. He's already leading the way or blazing the way in front of you. You don't have to go not knowing what's in front of you because God goes in front of you. How grateful we can be that Jesus has already gone ahead of us, that he's already shown us the way, that that he's already been there and that he's come back and told us. John 14, he says, I'm going and I will. I'm preparing a place for you. It's it's ready for you. How grateful I am that Jesus has suffered. He's endured. He's been raised as we sang together and we will celebrate at the end of the service because he's indeed gone before. Well, look next at what Moses tells all the people. Deuteronomy 31, verse six. Moses tells all the people, be strong and be courageous. Be strong and be courageous. Do not be terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you, and he will never forsake you. People of the Lord, are you facing an unknown future? Possibly. If you are facing an unknown future and you're uncertain about your future, will you stand with me now? 
you're all facing an unknown future. You can all stay at night or anxious because the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Thanks be to God. You can be seated. Can you imagine living with those words said to you each morning? How might your day change if you woke up hearing God saying to you, be strong, be courageous, because I'm with you? How might that have changed Joshua as he knew Moses was stepping down and he was called to take over and God says, I'm going with you and you will not indeed be How would that change your day if you woke up each day hearing those words? I mean, you can do that on your cell phone, right? You can set up an alarm, and when it wakes you up, record your voice saying back to you, you got this because God is with you and you're strong. You can be courageous because he never leaves you. Maybe we need to hear that each morning, that we can be strong in him. Well, now look at what takes place and who speaks in Deuteronomy 31, 23, says, the Lord gave this command to Joshua, son of Nun, be strong and courageous, for you will bring the Israelites into the land I promised them on oath, and I myself will be with you. I love how when God calls a leader or somebody to lead, he says, I'm with you. I will equip you, and you will not be alone. And what I've called you to, you won't go through alone, because I'm with you as you face what's in front of you. Reminds me of Romans 8 when Paul says, nothing will separate you from God's love. How might your day be impacted if you woke up each morning and heard that? Nothing will separate you from God's love. Maybe turn to the person on your left or right and just say that to them. Nothing will separate you from God's love. Go ahead and do that now. This is all context. We've not even gotten to Joshua yet. Did you realize that be strong and courageous from Joshua actually is an echo from Deuteronomy? And that's helpful to know as you look at those verses. And so let's take a look at Joshua together. So flip in your Bibles to the next book, Joshua. The Israelites are journeying, and if you can see with me on this map, they're camped on the east side of the Jordan. Um, Let's flip to the, yeah, thank you. So we have the Sea of Galilee up on the north. We have the Descender making its way, the Jordan River down to the Dead Sea. Possible route of the Jews right there. You see the camels, and they're getting ready to, to cross over. And so here's our next picture. Imagine being there with them and told that God will go ahead of you, but you don't know what's really in front of you. Imagine your children saying, what's coming? How many more hours? When's the next restroom? When are we going to eat next? How about you say, I don't know, but God does. They're facing an unknown future again. They don't really know what's in front of them. And let's take a look at how God tells them to be strong and to be courageous by looking at Joshua 1 at verse 1. Let's take a look at the first nine verses, and I invite you to stand for the reading of God's word this morning. So Joshua 1 at verse 1. Let's take a look at the first nine verses. It says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord... The Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and to the river, the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you, and I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Again, be strong and very courageous, but be careful to obey all the law my my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And look at this again. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. 
Do not be terrified and do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Let's join together in prayer. Uh, Father, thank you for your word. And thank you, Lord, that when we find a word that is helpful in our lives, that is useful, that is applicable, that uh, sharpens us, Thank you, Lord, that that verse can be helpful, but that it comes in context, that it's good for us to know, Lord, why you say what you say. Father, we love you and we thank you that you call us to be strong and that you call us to be courageous. We know, Lord, that we can only do that for you are with us. And so we love you, Jesus. We thank you. We pray this in your name alone and all of God's children say. So did you see verse nine, which said this on the screen? It says, have I not commanded you It's not a suggestion. How many of you have been walking around with strength and courage to a small degree? Just a little bit, I'm I'm doing okay, I'm feeling kind of. And, And God is saying, have I not commanded you, be strong, be courageous, do not be terrified because of an unknown future or an enemy or do not be discouraged For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I I love how in Deuteronomy, God tells Moses, Moses tells the people, and then we have Moses telling Joshua, and then we have Joshua telling the people. I love that, that there's this succession of who is told. And so we hear these people being told, be strong and be courageous. That's our verse for this series in this day on Sunday. Be strong and, and be courageous. The Hebrew word is the word hazak. I don't know if you've heard the word before, but it's, it's a Hebrew word that means be strong. Hazak, from right to left, you can see a coffee mug. And I'll say, well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> How can we use God's word in a way that people say, what is that? And then you say, let me tell you about that. When we lived in Illinois, my wife and I actually had Hazak 4 when we had four people in our family, and it was actually on her car. Um, Now that we're in Michigan, we don't need the front plate, so I took the back one off hers and put it on the front of mine. And if you know any police officers in Grand Haven, don't tell them I still have an illegal plate on the front of my car. (laughs) Jeff Hawk. (laughs) We have a member here who's the chief of police. Okay. But we're friends, so it's okay. I feel like I need to apologize for that, but... So be strong and be courageous is what God's word says. So let's look at those two pieces for a few moments. Be strong. What does it mean to be strong? It means finding strength in him, the one who is the source, not in yourself, but in him. And that's why the book of Exodus, way back in the beginning, says these words. Exodus says, the Lord is my. It's not me. It doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from me mustering it up. It doesn't come from having a good day. It doesn't come from finding a good parking spot. It doesn't come from... It comes from him. He alone is my strength. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will will praise him. It's what Isaiah 40 says in verse 29 when Isaiah says this. He gives. We need to stop relying on our own strength. It's not about waking up and seeing what you can do. It's about what he can do through you because he's the source of strength that we find for each day. Have you been spent lately? Have you had a day where there was just nothing left and you didn't know how you'd get through the day? Have you been at a recent court date and you didn't know how the court would go? Have you been in a job interview and you had no idea how that job interview would go? Have you sat at a recent doctor's appointment, anybody, and had no clue how it would turn out? Have you sat on the other side of the doctor's appointment receiving terrible news and you just thought, I I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to get through. Well, folks, you're not. You will not get through because he gets through. It's by the power of his strength that we're able to go through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for you are with me. You are with me. So be strong, but knowing that he gives strength. Be courageous. What does it mean to be courageous? Be strong and courageous. Hazak v'chametz is what the Hebrew says. Be strong and be courageous. It means this, be courageous. I think being courageous means being willing to do something 
that you can't do? When's the last time you did something you knew you couldn't do on your own? Think about it. Write it in your bulletin. Say, this is the mark, this is the moment when I trusted in him in a way that I knew I couldn't do it. It makes me think of seven or eight years ago where uh, somebody sat next to me at a volleyball tournament in Traverse City, Michigan, and said, hey, I hear that you've been to Israel a couple times. I feel like you should lead a trip. I was like, what? That's way out of my comfort zone. There's no way. I'm not smart enough. I don't know enough. I don't. But through a series of of people coming into my life, through a series of going on a leadership trip, through a, a couple opportunities to lead a trip with another guy, I find that God gives us steps of strength. It's not as if he infuses us all the time with a massive burst of energy, but he gives us what we need each day for the task that is indeed in front of us. After leading four or five trips to Israel with a guy that you guys don't know anything about, God has finally positioned me in a way that in March of next year, uh, Pastor Bob and I get to lead a trip together. Right? Christmas list, bucket list. I see you guys nudging each other. How cool would it be to, to travel together and to journey together and to see the things that God has placed in his land that we maybe could see together? And so March 17 of next year, Uh, Pastor Bob and I are going to be traveling together, and we would love to have you come with us. We have extra flyers um, out at the table out there, and then if you're friends with me on Facebook, um, great. If you're not, I understand why, but if you are, uh, this flyer I post often so you can see the trip and the details and the cost, but uh, this is something that I'm just being totally honest with you. I can't do this. I can't lead a trip to Israel. I never have been able to. I never can. I, I can't. I can't. It's not me. Each day after we get done with one day, look at, I mean, it's eight days. There's five sites per day and there's four teachings at each site. It's exhausting. But God wakes us up each morning. His mercies are new. Great is thy faithfulness. Which book does that come from? Lamentations 4 verse 17. He gives us what we need each day. And so we say, great is your faithfulness that he provides what we need each day. Having courage means doing something that you can't do that shows his strength. If you're not doing something that you can't do, it's as if you're saying to God, A, you can't do it, and B, I got this. He wants us to trust not in our own understanding, but in all our ways, to acknowledge him and to try something that we've never done before. Try something new in this next season and let him give you strength. Maybe for you, this will be the first year that you're in a small group. Try something new. It's okay to try something new. Maybe for you this year, you're gonna be a Kids Hope mentor for the first time ever. You're gonna talk to Jill and you're gonna say, I don't know what I have to give. Uh, Two years ago, I met with a second grader named Owen. I was way out of my comfort zone with Owen. This year, I don't know who God's gonna give me, who he's gonna line up to be in my path, but try something new that you've never done before. Uh, Maybe try reading his word for one month every day, just one month, and see what he gives you. Uh, Maybe for you, you go back over the sermons we've looked at, the handles, the scriptures, and you memorize each one that we have worked through together. What are you going to do that you can't do on your own? Maybe for some of you husbands, you're going to finally take that leap of faith, and you're going to go see a counselor with your wife. Does that hit home for anybody? It's finally time to go talk to somebody because, you know, we're all broken, right? We all need to talk to somebody. There's no point at which, okay, now you should go see somebody. The point is at which we all go see somebody and talk to somebody. Maybe that's the next step for you. Maybe for you wives, it's time for you to confide in your husband first and not your best friend. Maybe for you husbands, it's time for you to pursue your wife first. Pursue her first in a way that she is seen by you in a new way. Who knows, who knows what one step of obedience, right? Steps of strength. Who knows what one step of obedience might indeed lead to? So CLC, be courageous. You can do it. You can indeed be courageous. Talk to somebody new. When's the last time you talked to somebody you didn't know? Recently? When's the last time you talked to somebody you didn't agree with? I hate doing that. 
When's the last time you talked to somebody who believes in a totally different lifestyle than you? Just to listen, just to hear. When's the last time you said to somebody, tell me your story before you try to tell yours? Try something new that shows you trust in him. So how will you seek to be strong in this coming week? Not relying on yourself, but relying on him. How will you seek to be strong? And how will you seek to be courageous? What new thing are you gonna try that you've never done before for his glory and for his honor? Have you thought about it? Did something get sparked? Did you write something down? Ask him to help you with that. Don't do it alone. Okay, one final piece. We have God saying to Moses, be strong. We have Moses saying to the people, be strong. We have God saying to Joshua, be strong. We have Moses saying to Joshua, be strong. We have Joshua saying to all the people, be strong. Are you seeing the succession that builds to Joshua 1.9? But there's one final piece I didn't show you. I can see how excited you are. Take a look at Joshua 1 verse 16. Joshua 1.16. Look at what happens. Joshua 1.16. Joshua 1 at verse 16, the people answer to Joshua, whatever you have commanded, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Verse 18, only you, Joshua, you now be strong and courageous. Have you ever seen that before? I can be strong and courageous for the Lord is with me. But then it turns and the people say back to Joshua, now you be strong, Joshua. Now you be strong. They, they've now bought into what Joshua and the Lord are teaching, and they respond in kind back to Joshua. We want people to say, be strong and courageous to us. But we can't forget the last piece. Be strong and courageous for the Lord your God. Anybody can say, be strong and be courageous. But can you say, be strong and be courageous for the Lord your God is with you? One member of this church chose Joshua 1.9 as his favorite, and he had this to say. Be strong and courageous. It's been my motto through personal medical issues, as well as an emotional and spiritual battle dealing with a major event with one of our children. I cried out to God, and I would hear him say, be strong, be brave, be courageous, because I am there with you every step of the way. Wherever this path leads, it's not always easy to practice the command but when I'm reminded that my father is walking the path with me, I feel strength and hope. How good it was to hear that. Let's join together in prayer at this time. So Father, the command that you've given to us is to be strong and to be courageous. And forgive us, Lord, for the times that we have sought to be strong, to be courageous in our own and no, Lord, doubt, no doubt there are those that we come into contact with in our lives who are seeking to be strong, who are seeking to be courageous. And maybe it's just not lasting. It's just not working for some reason. May those be the moments, Lord, that we can speak truth into their lives humbly, gently, gracefully, teaching, Lord, and instructing and helping others to know that, that when we listen to you, we can be strong and courageous for you, the Lord, are with us. Remind us again today, Lord, through the sacrament we will participate in shortly, that you've never left us, that you're always by our side, and that you call us to proclaim your death until you come again. Jesus, we love you, and we thank you that you showed us the way. We pray all of these things in Jesus' most precious and holy name alone, and all of God's children say, amen.